What's up everybody and welcome to our living room. We're doing something a little different this vlog. We didn't get a chance to do any bus work this last weekend. We had one last hurrah up north with my family. So we decided we'd do something a little different. If you watch our vlogs, you know I mentioned this at the end of the last vlog. I wanted to start making some different videos, something different besides just the build. Maybe something to provide a little bit more value to you guys and just let you know kind of what we're figuring out as we're going and some things that we're learning and hopefully things that we can pass on to you. So welcome to this video that is our top five tools for bus demolition. So let's get started. As, I, as we're talking about these things, I'll show some clips of us using them and we'll talk about how we use them, why we, they were helpful, why they're important to us, why they may be helpful to you. So hopefully this won't just be our faces talking the whole time. So we're gonna work from least, I guess least- I wanna say least used. Because Maybe not least used. We've been we used. use the for a lot. True. So, least expensive. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> that doesn't totally apply with all of us, but kind of. But, number five, the paint scraper. So, Reg, what do we use this on? Not paint. <laughs> True. We used it on everything but paint. Um, we used it on anything that was tacky or sticky, especially when we were doing the windows. When we took our windows out to um, replace them. I don't, what's the stuff around it called? Caulk? Uh, caulk and weather stripping. And, yeah. yeah, I mean, we had to use it on everything for our windows from the outside of the bus, on the actual windows themselves, um, scraping all of that tacky, sticky stuff off. It was really helpful in doing that. Definitely, and the nice part about the paint scraper is it's got a lot of different kind of surfaces. Uh, if you get the five-in-one paint scrapers, um, they've got like pointed edges on them. You know, there's a, the good main scraping surface. There's a couple other small edges. So it really helps with getting in um, behind a lot of that sticky stuff, that stuff that's just stuck on there. And even was helpful in like cutting some harder stuff and just scoring it a bunch of times with the paint scraper. It's kind of a very versatile and Cheap tool. Yeah, so, you could use it in place of like an X-Acto knife in some yep. different situations. Yep. So, paint scraper, number five. Number four. This is one that maybe won't be as important for everybody, but was definitely important for us, and that was a Sawzall. So, Regan didn't really use this. It's a pretty aggressive instrument that she didn't really want to touch too much, but... I also feel like it happened every time I wasn't there. True. Which is for the best. So the Sawzall for us was mostly used during uh, when we were doing a lot of the framework, uh, cutting out the frame, cutting through a lot of that, those metal bits. Um, but we did also use it when we were cutting out parts of our plywood floor. Um, parts of the flooring we would cut uh, lines with the Sawzall when we could use it. Certainly we used the circular saw at times but Sawzall is kind of light and a little bit more nimble and allows you to get into some smaller areas. So we kind of used it randomly, but definitely mostly for the metal framework. Um, and any time where you're just frustrated and you want to cut something, uh, that's what the Sawzall is good for. So uh, definitely Sawzall at number four. Again, for us, this was really uh, important because we did so much metal work, so much work with the frame. May not be as important for everybody else, but definitely if you're doing metal work or even cutting into your floor, a Sawzall can be helpful in uh, just getting in some of those tighter areas where you need a little fine blade. So, number three is Mr. Crowbar. So this was one of Regan's it's my favorites. Favorite. Yeah. Made me feel powerful. Could break through anything with that thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. So, uh, the Crowbar, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's pretty versatile. I mean, we used this thing when we were taking out our floors. We've used it, I mean, We've used it taking off a lot our back of different door. things. Yeah, taking off the back door. <laughs> did a great job of doing that. We'll show that clip again right here. <gasps> oh, oh shit! The crowbar is just one of those, you need a little bit more oomph getting something disconnected or whatever. Bust out the crowbar, pair it with a hammer so you can really get it sunken in to wherever you're uh, putting it and it's gonna hopefully do the yeah, job. Definitely use the hammer instead of your toe. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, Big mistake. <laughs> learn that the hard way. 
another thing to note about the crowbar is it can be helpful to have a really big crowbar and a smaller crowbar. So there were times where we would use a smaller crowbar to kind of get something levered up so we could get the bigger one farther in there and get more leverage. Yeah, that um, one that had kind of the yeah, it kind of had like a shape. Yeah. Like Gooseneck. I don't. Know what you call it. I don't yeah, sure. Kind of. Um, but we used a couple that so we had three different ones. We had a really big one, kind of a medium one, and a small one. Um, and it was super helpful because certainly there were times where the big one was too big, you couldn't fit or it in. Where places. We, when we were doing the floor, you would use the big one to kind yep. of lift it up just a little bit so that we could stick the other one under there. So yep. we were using them at the same time in some different situations. Yeah. Definitely crowbar. Uh, Highly recommended. So now we're gonna go on to number two. Regan was just telling me she's not really sure how this differs from a drill, but number two is the impact driver. So what an impact driver is, is it's basically a drill, uh, but it's a drill that also impacts as it's going in. So it's got a bit more power than your standard drill. And I've found that this has been really helpful with removing stuff it has more power removing rusted things screws whatever that have been in your bus for however many years um, but also putting things back in so like when we were doing our windows um, putting those screws back in mm -hmm, the frame yeah putting the screws back in the frame was pretty difficult even with the normal drill you know reg was having some troubles you know pushing all the way I was doing the same thing. It wasn't just you. <laughs> uh, because the same thing was happening to me, you know, when we would push, it just, the drill didn't have enough power. Whereas the impact driver, it was giving that impact and could just power through those spots where the screw would maybe get a little bit tighter um, and just need that extra little oomph. So impact driver, it different. it's similar to a drill, but different. Um, we have one of both. We bought a set that has uh, both a long time ago. Um, but I will say, if I'm gonna pick one or the other up, I almost always pick up the impact driver just because it makes everything so easy. So by far makes it easier than a drill. And that brings us to number one, the holy grail of all things that we've used on the bus to demolish, or really even now we're still using it at times. Um, but that is the angle grinder. So angle grinder we have used all over the place in the bus. I mean, it's like the ultimate destruction tool, basically. You have used. You used it. I used it once. I used it once for the rust. Yes. But it was hard and heavy. Yeah. <laughs> really slipped away from me a few times. <laughs> so uh, the nice part about an angle grinder is there's all sorts of different attachments you can get. So we were using it with metal cutting attachments, an attachment a blade to cut the fiberglass, which I think was a metal cutting blade that we used for fiberglass, but did the job. Um, we attached uh, wire wheel brushes, like Regan was saying, that we used because an angle grinder has a much higher RPM revolutions per minute than a drill would. So while you can buy wire attachments for drills and things like that, a lot of times they're not gonna do as good as the angle grinder. You can get a little bit more leverage with it. It's got higher RPM. So it's just gonna do a better job of stripping things and doing what you need it to do than a drill would. It was used all over the bus. I mean, I can't, I don't, <laughs> don't, there's very few spots where it wasn't used. And so, you know, we even used it when we were doing our framework, obviously to cut a bunch of metal, but then also grind metal and prepare metal, um, wire wheel metal. Um, it can just be used in so many different ways. And again, it's kind of like the Sawzall, but better in that like, you can just get in so many small areas with it, make little nicks and cuts to help you get things out or just cut things out completely. Angle grinder by far has been our most used tool, I would say. And I've heard that from a lot of schoolie people, I think angle grinder is huge for anybody, whether you're building a shuttle bus, a schoolie, whatever it is, it's just such a versatile tool to be able to conquer a lot of these things on these old buses, the rust, the metal, the fiberglass, whatever, it can really do it all and do it much quicker than using hand tools or trying to find out some other way of doing it. So uh, I would say angle grinder has a hard spot at number one. So guys, uh, that's our top five tools for demoing your schoolie 
If you have any you would add to the list, put them below. Surely there's a lot of other options out there, um, a lot of tools people use uh, that we maybe never even thought about uh, using or maybe been more helpful than others. You know, we had a lot of tools or we have some tools that we've probably used more that we didn't put on this list because they're more or less specific to our certain situation. Obviously we've used a lot of other tools on our build so far and on the demolition process, but these are really the ones that stood out to us. Um, some of the other tools we've needed, obviously you need a good hammer. With the crowbar, with anything else, you just need to smash some stuff. So get a good hammer or sledgehammer. Uh, sledgehammer just gives you that little extra bit of weight. Circle saw. Oh yeah, the circular saw. The circular saw. The circular saw has come in handy when we were, when we were cutting out our floors. Uh, that definitely helped in uh, just getting some of the process started and then being able to come in with an angle grinder or a sawzall or crowbars or whatever else. Um, that just helped us kind of get the process started. And then the sander. table saw. Yeah, table saw and sander. Those are kind of now working into the building process. Um, but those are some more tools that we're adding into our arsenal and uh, are finding that we're using more and more and I'm sure we're just gonna keep using them more and more now that we're building rather than destroying so much. So those are our top five tools, guys. Uh, put a comment below. What would your top five tools be or what tool would you add to this list? What tool would you change out? Um, every build's different. Everybody's necessities are different. Everybody's uh, you know, access to tools is different. Um, we're very thankful that we've had access to most of these tools and haven't had to buy a ton of them. Sometimes, you know, the tools can be an expensive part of the build. And certainly, you know, that's something to take into consideration. But I will tell you that having the right tools makes the job 10 times easier. It's always going to make the job easier if you have the right tool to do it than if you're trying to make something work. Now, certainly, We've made tools work in ways that they uh, shouldn't have worked in, but that's kind of how it, it works out sometimes. And reach out to all of your friends and your family members, see if they have anything that you could use or borrow before you just like go out and buy something. I feel like we've yeah. reached out to so many different people and it's actually worked out for us. So. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely don't hesitate to reach out to family and friends. Chances are they want to help you on the build, guys. If you want to use a tool for day, or you only need it for a week or whatever, you don't want to have to go out and buy a $150 tool or a $100 tool. Find creative ways to get these tools in your arsenal and just use them for the amount of time that you have to. I think there's maybe even places that you could rent some of these tools depending on how big or small they are. Um, but some of those more expensive ones definitely get creative in how you can go about not having to buy them. And maybe sometimes don't hesitate to lean on those around you and you'll be surprised I think in how they're willing to help you out. So that's it for this video guys. Uh, hope you like this little different style of a video and Andy Racky, you... this one was for you. We weren't gonna let you go another Wednesday without a video. Yes. We know you look forward to it. Yes. So we gotta put something out there. <laughs> yeah, we've been, our, our loyal following, AKA my oldest brother, has been getting on us about our videos. That's. That's his Wednesday night activity. <laughs> so uh, we want to fill in with some of these when we can't do work so that we can keep weekly videos coming to you guys or at least weekly videos. Definitely more of these types of videos coming down the road. Let us know what else you want to hear from us in, in regards to other videos. Drop it in the comments as well. We'll definitely see you next Wednesday with some bus content because we got more building to do this weekend. Look forward to that. It's fun to say building instead of destroying. Yeah. So very excited. It's kind of different. <laughs> We got more bus work to do this weekend, guys, so more building coming your way. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to go ahead and click the subscribe button. If you like this video or if you've seen any of our other videos and you like those or watch those, if you're watching our videos, why aren't you subscribed, guys? Come on. Drop us a like. Do whatever. Uh, we just love to see your support and uh, talk to you guys and, and connect with the community. So thank you so much for watching. Catch you on the next one.